Hi, this is Rafa, uh, representing uh, the newest nation on the face of the earth, Yasserel Restored. And uh, I also represent uh, the barbarians worldwide. And I'd like to uh, explain to you, if you would give me a few moments of your time, who the barbarians are and why they are so important for your life and for the future of mankind. Well, as you know, the word barbarians is not uh, very well respected in the Western world and indeed in the entire world. There's a reason for that. The entire history of mankind can be divided between the history of the barbarians and the history of the slave empires. Now, most of the history that you know and I was taught is the history of the uh, slave empires, such as um, the Seleucids, such as the Babylonians, um, such as the, um, the, the ones of Egypt, of, uh, uh, which originally in the old days was known as Mitzuri, uh, and then later on as a Gupti or Guptia, and today known as Egypt. Um, the empires most familiar with us, of course, are the Roman uh, Empire that lasted uh, all the way from 46 BC when it conquered um, ancient uh, Israel or Israel uh, and has gone all the way until uh, you could make a case until 1776. Uh, when the American Revolution ended uh, the British Empire, which was an extension of the old Roman Empire. Now, all of these empires had one thing in common. Uh, they were built on slavery. They were built with a hierarchy, a relatively small group of people, and a very large group of slaves who they ruled with fear, with uh, punishment, often cruel punishment, uh, and the fear of death. That's what made these great, uh, supposedly great empires. We look at the pyramids um, of the pharaohs in Egypt, and we say, wow, what a wonderful thing. <laughs> no, it wasn't so wonderful because there were uh, hundreds of thousands of slaves who were beaten and whipped every day to build those pyramids. You know? Would you call the, the uh, prison over in Germany of the Holocaust, would you call it a, a great empire of Hitler? Well, neither should the pyramids. They are monuments of pain, suffering, and sin. Of some of the hardest times and the worst times of human history. Now, the people, the only group that has persistently stood against the slavery of the empires. And there's just one group. Remember, all of the religions of the empires, including Christianity, including Judaism, including the Babylonian uh, religions, including the old Seleucid religion, religions, including even all the way back to uh, Ashur, of, uh, uh, that they call today um, Assyria. It really was called Ashur. Of Nimrod. It was the first great empire that rebelled against the, the word of God, against the word of Yah. And uh, the empires hate the word of Yah. The pure word of Yah uh, is against slavery. It's about freedom. The first commandment of the Ten Commandments of Life, the very first one, is get out of houses of bondage. And the first thing it says under there is Get those enslaving gods out of your face. Live free or die fighting. Now, that's the first of God's true commandments. And it's the most important. Now, why am I a barbarian? Because I believe in what they say. First of all, the name itself. Bar means son. Bari means sons. It's the plural. Bar Bari Yans. The subject is the first. The son, singular. Second is the son. So it means they're the adjective. It's the sons of the son. Of who? Of Yah. Sons of the son of Yah. That's who I am. I'm one of the sons of the son. Now, 
The word sons can mean two things. It obviously can mean that uh, you biologically fathered a son. But in the scriptural sense, in the main scriptural sense, and certainly in the um, uh, in the theological or the spiritual sense of it, it means something different because according to almost all of the scriptures that we have, no matter which one you begin with, the son was never created. He was eternal. He was always there. Now, there's always people around who are saying, no, you know, uh, we have these people even in Christianity that say uh, Jesus uh, became uh, like the Father enough until, quote, the Holy Spirit uh, immersed him and accepted him into the Godhead, that kind of thing. Uh, well, uh, that sure cuts out a lot of the teachings. <laughs> you know, how could the prophets, there were, there's 144 prophets, all of them preached about a man named Yahoo that the churches don't preach about, that Christianity doesn't preach about. Only the barbarians preach about. Because Yah is the short form of our true Savior, Yahusha. Shah just means a savior. You could just say, what was his name? Yahoo. Well, how come we don't know about him? Because the slave empires hate the barbarians. They hate their scriptures. They hate their savior. They hate their God. They hate their creation account. They hate their way of life. The empires hate barbarians and everything about Yah. But you know, in spite of that, Almighty Yah has made known himself. He blessed us with the greatest and the only phrase in human history, over 6,000 years old, that says, praise be to Yah. You, every one of you know it. Hallelujah. You say it all the time. Every religion says it. Islam says it. Buddhism says it. Uh, the Hindus say it. The, the Messianics say it. The Catholics say it. The Christians say it of all stripes. It is about the only thing that unites all the different denominations of the Christians. What's it mean? Hallelujah means praise be unto. Who praise be unto who? Praise be unto Yah, the same Yah that the barbarians seek to be like. Sons of the Son of Yah. Well, we were birthed by the Son of Yah because He was a co creator with the Father. And so not one of us is alive without our DNA, the, the, the fingerprint of Almighty Yah. Uh, causing the beginning of life, causing the first man and the first woman. But it really means more importantly to be like, to be in the image of, to be like the son of Yah. Who was the son of Yah? You know, often in the, uh, in the uh, Holy Bibles, it talks about how Jesus says, I'm the son of man. Well, they missed the whole purpose there. Uh, and they try to build an elaborate theory on the Son of Man. Look, it's it, it, he was a, uh, let's just use the word Hebrew for right now. Our Savior was a Hebrew. He was not Greek. Now, the Hebrew, there's two words. There is Adam and Adam. Adam is natural man. Adam is the man of Yah. If you don't know Yah, you miss the whole thing. Because Adam is who our Savior was. He was the man of Yah. He was in the likeness of the man of Yah. He established, in fact, the image of the man of Yah. The barbarians are freedomites. We love freedom. You remember the barbarian empire? <laughs> no, you don't. Because there never was one. <laughs> didn't exist. Why? Because the barbarians didn't believe in ruling people. They believed in freedom. They believed in living and let living. They believed in voluntary uh, helping one another, in helping your kids, helping you build your barns, helping you build your house. But not slavery. In fact, in the second of the Ten Commandments of the, uh, of the barbarians of the original scriptures, it says free the slaves. Now, we kept getting in trouble for that. <laughs> that is why that uh, especially the Roman Empire hated the barbarians. The British Empire did too. They, when they came and uh, tried to subdue the Americas, they called us all barbarians. That's why we go by that term proudly. 
American barbarians, for those of us in the Americas. But it wasn't particularly the United States of America that owns that name because it begins at the beginning of, um, of the scripture, of the original scriptures, when he says, proclaim boldly the call of Yah, America. That's what we're supposed to do. And in the latter days, that is exactly what North America and South America are designed to do. The barbarians of North and South America are called to lead a great return to the God of creation and against the slave empires of this world. That's why we gladly and proudly and humbly are honored to carry the name barbarians. And you're going to see us a lot of places. And uh, we're fast becoming the most hated people by the uh, slave empire religions like Christianity. Now, I know the number of you say, wait a minute, you know, I don't believe in slavery either, and I'm a Christian. Well, that's really impossible. And here's why. Because in the Old Testament, in Exodus 21, it gives you the Lord God's laws for owning slaves. And it tells you very clearly that uh, if a slave comes in and you give him a wife and he has kids, when he goes out, in other words, he's bought his freedom or either you release him, either one, uh, you, you can keep his wife and his kids. That's what it says, read it. So if you believe that Holy Bible and Christianity is defined as believing that Holy Bible, then uh, <laughs> you're locked in. It means you believe in slavery. Now, if you don't believe in slavery, then you're not a Christian. Now, I grew up in Christianity, too. And I grew up in the southern part of the United States, and we were still, I can still remember that uh, there were still these old feelings from the Civil War 150 years ago that the South shall rise again. We ain't finished the Civil War yet. I grew up in a group of people called Southern Baptists. Uh, many of them I love. There are many fine people that call, identify themselves with Southern Baptists. They're going to hate me for this initially, but they're going to love me when it opens a door for them to have eternal life. Of course, they think they got eternal life now. I want to tell you, sweetheart, no, you don't. You're going to thank me one day because the barbarians are the ones who are going to save your soul, or at least they're going to begin the process of it and help you recognize that you've been deceived. Revelation 12, 9 says Satan deceives the whole world. You've been deceived. All of us were deceived. Nobody on this planet has grown up in a religion in, in the truth uh, of the word of Yah. It was covered over with the empire religions. And that time was called the times of the Gentiles or the time of the unbelievers. Or you could say the time of the empire religions. The time of the slave religions. Why am I not a Christian? Because I don't believe in slavery. I don't believe in murder either. I don't believe in divine murder. You know, I don't believe anybody ought to be murdered. Murder by its definition is unrighteous, unjust killing of a human being. All of the slave empires in their religions, they have divine murder. Case in point, easy one, right off the bat, Noah's flood. Uh, the Holy Bible, which I'm holding a, a copy of it right here. I don't like them because, uh, you know, this is the faith Bible. But you can see right there on the, on the end of it, Holy Bible. This is the new open Bible. Large print edition, because <laughs> you get older, <laughs> you, you like something bigger to see, right? <laughs> well, that word holy, the first word there is the name of a pagan deity, name holy. Still millions a day in India worship him. He's a Hindu god, but he came originally out of Babylon, and Babylon out of Ashur from Nimrod. Nimrod created him. So whose book is this? Bible just means book. Whose book is this? Holies. It's Babylonian. Well, wait a minute. Who is Babylon? Well, <laughs> Babylon was a slave empire. By the way, they enslaved women. They had sex slaves. Um, they killed people that went against them and that didn't agree with the king. 
and that's the way that the entire book reads. Honor the king no matter what. Now, let me give you an example of this in, in the Holy Bible. First of all, um, you know, about a third of the original uh, of the first uh, Bibles um, were uh, not holy. <laughs> you know, the, the, there is an original scripture. There is an original savior. There is an original creator. They're all there. Satan created the counterfeits. The empire religions tried to create counterfeits for everything because they knew how powerful religion was and faith was over their people. Now, in 1776, uh, Yahuwah engineered, I believe Yahuwah was behind it, the American, the beginning of the American Revolution. We should have lost that. Our forefathers should have lost that. We did lose about the first 13 battles in a row. We lost 95% of the Revolutionary Army. We got down to a thousand men, and we were up against forty thousand of the best troops on the face of the earth, the British Empire, that had never lost, never. It won every single battle they ever fought. And do you think? What do you think the odds are that a thousand um, farmers with their squirrel guns and pitchforks, half of them didn't even have shoes, in the middle of a blinding uh, blizzard? What kind of chance would they have against 40,000 of the best troops in the earth? Plus, there were about, uh, word is, about three to 4,000 mercenaries from other countries in Europe to back them up. British were rich. <laughs> Zero. Zero chance. Unless there was a supernatural intervention. British called us barbarians. And so we were. We were led by a man by the name of George Washington and his wife, Martha Washington, who both in the uh, 13th battle of that campaign, 13 is an important number for America, in the 13th battle, George and Martha converted to faith in Yah. It's amazing history. It was written out of your regular history books because, uh, you know, the Christians later on wanted to uh, whitewash and the Satan wanted to whitewash true American history with European history. Romans 13, 5 says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for every governing authority is established by God. <laughs> King George, 1776. He was established by God. That's what the King James Bible... Well, why wouldn't the King James Bible say that? King James Bible is about supporting uh, the religious fanaticism that goes with the empire religions. They wanted slaves. Never rebel against the king. Look at it. It's still there. Romans 13, 1. For every uh, governing authority is established by God, it says. And the ones who rebel against the governing authorities rebel against God. So if you are a believer in Romans 13, 1, you need to take your American citizenship, take it over, throw it away. Oh, that's sin. You ought to repent of that. Go back over there, write the king, a queen of England, a letter. I'm so sorry my forefathers rebelled against you because I just found out they were rebelling against God. Reject your American citizenship and go over there and kiss the Queen of England's ring. <laughs> Why is it that you don't feel that's very spiritual? Well, I can tell you one thing. Us barbarians aren't going to join you. <laughs> we're very glad to be Americans. And we're glad to be barbarians. Sons of the Son of Yah. Why? Because he's freedomites. The original message of the original Jesus spoke about freedom. Live free or die fighting. That's why the Romans and the Jewish leaders killed him. Because they could not tolerate a freedomite in the midst of slavery. And both of them had slaves. Now the Jews are going to object. Say, oh, we didn't have slaves. Say, yes, you did. The Roman Empire had slaves. The Jews and the Roman Empires got along fabulously. That's how the Jews got rich. They believe in slavery. 
all the big religions were built on slavery except the barbarians. The barbarians worked. They built their own villages. They built their own companies. They built their, their own towns. You know, they built it with their own hands. And if you look at most American history books, it's amazing. It shows you how much the Roman and British Empire have really affected uh, even our American culture. And it's why you have a negative view of the barbarians as being ruthless people. <laughs> they weren't ruthless. They were the best uh, well-educated people on the face of the planet, always have been. The barbarians have been the only ones that really knew continually what the original scriptures were about and who their God was. Almighty Yah, as in hallelujah. Recognize these prophets, even in the Catholic version, it's not the per, uh, true version, but God has not left us as orphans. Isaiah, first prophet, that even in the Holy Bible that Jesus uh, quoted. And when they ask him, sir, who are you? Uh, you know, how do we know about you? And he says, go to the prophets, the Nabiyah, the prophets of Yah, actually. Because they talk about me. All the prophets talk about him. The first one's real name was not Isaiah. And the second one, Jeremiah. Who do you hear there? Yah, 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 Uzziah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, Hezekiah, Eliah, or Elijah. Over and over, Yah, 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 Yah. But in the original, it's Yahoo. It's actually Yasha Yahu for Isaiah. Go look it up. Yasha Yahu means the Savior is Yahu. How much clearer can you get than that? Why would the Savior quote somebody, if his name was Jesus, why would he quote the prophet that said the Savior is Yahu? <laughs> because there was no Jesus. Now, I know a lot of people are mad at me. A lot of religious leaders. They ought to be mad at me because if they're making a lot of money, Rafa and the barbarians are the end of their gravy train. It's the end of their deception, end of their lies. We're calling you on the carpet, and we put, we're put we rich yet, but we're going to beat that way. We're going to get it rich over your money <laughs> because you're through lying. There is no more uh, power in your deceptions. The barbarians are here of America. And by the way, that's America spelled on the end of it with an A-H. As in the A-H that was put in Abram's name that made it Abraham. As the A-H that was put in Moshe's name to make him Moshe. As in Sarah's name that made her from Sarai to Sarah. And on and on. The great A-H that is used throughout the scripture. We're the barbarians of America, the sons of the son of Yah, of the land to proclaim boldly the call of Yah. That's who we are. I hope that uh, some of you all, right now, as these words hit your heart, you just know that's who you are too. Now, in the latter days, um, actually, uh, it was prophesied to uh, Abraham our uh, national uh, physical father, a genetic father, uh, that this covenant that he made with Yahuwah, his true God, would be for him, for his children, and for his children's children. Often it goes three generations empowered by the spirit of Yah, whose also name is Yah. Uh, you know, how do we know all, all of them have the same name? Well, there's many indications. Even in your Holy Bible, you have a lot of those indications. For instance, like in, uh, uh, in John uh, 5.22, he talks about, uh, I come in my Father's name, but you, didn't, you don't receive me. If somebody else comes in his name, you're going to receive him. If Jesus comes in his name, you're going to receive Jesus. Matthew 24, he even tells them what shall be uh, the end of the age and the sign of your coming. He tells them, first of all, beware that there'll be many who come deceiving you by the name Christos. Jesus Christos. The biggest deception in world history is Jesus saves. And just about all of us in the West have been beguiled by that at some time. Millions and millions and millions. Now, I have another reason I'm a barbarian 
and you're going to find out is that we're scholars. We take our time, and we know what we're talking about. That's why we put money behind it. Nobody else puts money behind it. We put $10,000 uh, behind what we say. And by the way, we've got a challenge up. Go to JesusCannotSave.com, and you'll see there a $10,000 challenge. You know, we've got, there's no saying in uh, the West here where I live that uh, money talks and mm, walks. <laughs> All right. See this book right here? Almost any seminary will have this book in their library. Fourth edition, Greek New Testament. That's what they teach all the students, the New Testament. They all know it's not wasn't written in English. Uh, most of us grew up just being familiar with the English version, and we didn't learn much of the Greek. But we all knew that really the Greek New Testament was behind that. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, was our Savior Greek? Did he speak Greek? Some say yes, some say no. But there is nobody that says he was Greek. No, he was Hebrew. They say he's a Jew, but that's a lie because there were no Jews more than 500 years ago. There weren't any letter J more than 500 years ago. So the fact that Jesus was a Jew is a lie. You know, uh, the original uh, Jesus was not a Jew. He didn't speak Jewish stuff. There was no Jewish stuff even around because there was no J. So who was he? Well, if you look at this book, even this book got a few things right. And it has the word Yahudios. That's what they translate uh, as Jew, but it's not Jew. Yahudios is just what it says. It is the people of Yahoo. Yahudah is where we get the word Judah. Judah, the D means those who follow or those who pray. So Judah are those who follow Yahu. Yahudah. Yahudahos, the people of Yahu, who are the barbarians. We are the people who, uh, the, the, the family uh, are the sons of the son of Yah. The longer name of it, Yahu. Well, wow, Rob, how come I never heard of this? Same reason a thief can't find a policeman, honey. I mean, look, those Christian scholars and those religious merchants, they don't want you to know the truth because you're, going, you're not going to give your money to them anymore. And all of a sudden, they're going to sound kind of hollow because you remember all those sermons about how, I, I, you know, I was in a coma and I went and I saw Jesus. And Jesus appeared to me, you know, and there right beside him was uh, was was Abraham and Jacob and uh, and maybe they saw uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Remember that? And you gave them all kind of money, and they bought jet planes, and they convinced you how spiritual they were. You were deceived, and so was I for quite a while. Our say was not Greek. He was Hebrew. And in that Hebrew scriptures, there is no Christos. That's Greek. Our Savior told us, beware, be careful. He tells us right there in Matthew 24. Be careful anybody calls himself Christos. Do you know even in the uh, original Greek that the Savior, uh, where it does use the word Christu, meaning the king, Yahoo. But do you know that in P45 and P46, which are the earliest uh, Greek uh, manuscripts, that, by the way, this book ignores, because it never calls him Yahoo. If they were honest scholars, they would go back and they would see the Yahoo that's in hundreds and even thousands of New Testament texts. And basically all of the Hebrew texts Talk about Yahoo. Why? Because he is the Savior that all the prophets pointed to. Look, all of the prophets, they knew you cannot come to the Father, Yahuwah, until you come through the Son, Yahoo. And by the way, Yahoo has uh, three of the four letters of Yahuwah's name. The only uh, thing left is to repeat the second, A-H, the second letter. It's an A-H as in Yah. Just put it on the end. Yahoo what? 
Ah, how hard is this? Actually, the word for Judah is really Yahuda. There's only one letter difference. There's a D, the Delet. That's added. It's like a triangle. All you got to do is pull the triangle out. The scripture says the child can lead them. Now, you'll hear all these, these uh, Hebrew scholars, oh, Rafa doesn't know Hebrew because that's too simple, da, 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 because the, the, the rabbis, they're talking about modern rabbis, of course. The rabbis don't believe in the Savior. I mean, that's kind of like asking the thief uh, if he'll testify uh, and give a written report and everything about how he stole something. He ain't going to do it unless he's arrested and you got something over his head. I hear people all the time, well, I'll just ask and, and see if the Lord will tell me. <laughs> the Lord ain't going to tell you that he's got you deceived. Satan's going to tell you he's got you deceived. <laughs> the, will the Holy Spirit tell you he's got deceived? This God holy, this Hindu avatar of Satan, he's going to tell you you're deceived? Uh-uh. You know who's going to tell you deceived? Your mind's going to tell you you're deceived. And your heart, if you'll ask Almighty Yah. But you got to ask him because all the other pagan gods are going to tell you, oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're going to heaven. You, you got your ticket now. Don't listen to Rafa. Don't listen to those barbarians. I mean, okay, Lord God kills children. He, he, he has sex slaves. Uh, he puts women in, in, in slavery. In fact, women don't even count uh, because they, they're not even allowed to vote, uh, you know, on the thing. And okay, and maybe we, we steal land and maybe we en enslave a bunch of people, you know. But if you happen to be a slave, it's just bad luck, you know. So uh, some people are born to be free and rule over others. Uh, but the Lord passes the sins of, um, of the fathers on to the third and fourth generation. So you ought to put, start putting to, get, uh, putting to death your grandchildren for um, lethal sins of your grandfathers and all the other kind of garbage, which you don't believe in. You don't believe in Deuteronomy 13. It says if you find an unbeliever in a city, wipe out the whole city. That's terrorism. And actually the barbarians are going to start taking this seriously because for those preachers, and this is a warning to you, preachers. We're coming after you. We're going to give you, we've been nice. We're going to give you a chance to repent and a ch chance to get out of preaching that Holy Bible. Best you did yeah, is go before your congregation and repent. Just tell them you're sorry. You didn't read the whole thing. But it is a terrorist book. You know, it's, it's, it's the worst deception Satan has ever created. It'll get you into polygamy. It'll get you into sex slavery. It'll get you into slavery. Uh, it was the reason why we fought such a horrible civil war in this country because we got rid of the government of England and of Europe and we kept their religion. It's time for the Americas to stand up and think. Love God with all the heart, but love him with our mind too. And start being people of integrity. What, you want to still tell your kids and everything? What, it's going to be another hundred years, another thousand years? You're going to, your, your great, 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 great grandkids still going to be wrestling with the horrible, uh, unethical teachings of this book. If a man uh, leaves his wife, he causes her to be an adulterer. <laughs> you going to teach that to your little daughter so she can talk to her daughter? You ought to teach you that maybe they ought to be a sex slave. Ought to be a concubine to somebody. Really? Or maybe third or fourth wife, like the Muslims do. Really? <laughs> uh, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to do it over our objection. We didn't know better when we were first born, but our children are going to hear a different voice. And your children are going to hear a different voice. Now, either you can tell them or we're going to tell them. But they're going to get a chance to be free Americans. They're going to be a free chance to be barbarians, to join that great noble throng of freedomites that had lived all across the century. Now, this book right here has all kind of ethical problems. Take, go take the land of the Hittites. That's stealing, isn't it? Uh, go kill the unbelievers, stone them to death. That's murder. That's terrorism. Um, if you want to go take a third or fourth wife, you know, if uh, if you can't take care of your same wife in the same way, then you can throw her out without anything. In my book, that's terrorism too. 
You don't have to support your children. Don't have to support her. You can keep the children. Just throw her out. You know? Hey, slavery's okay. According to this book, it is. It's against the law in America. Thank you, Yah. You see, actually, this book teaches terrorism, and it's dangerous. Because somebody might just read it and actually believe it. Well, you say, Rafa, man, this makes a mess of things. No, it doesn't. Things have already been a mess. Almighty Yah sent us, the barbarians of Yasserel, America, to help straighten out the mess. You're in a mess. You want to you get free of it? Look, the last warning of this book says don't change one word. Revelation 22. Uh, 18, 19. If you add to it, you're going to get the plagues of this uh, of, of Egypt upon you. If you take away one word, your name's taken out of the tree of life, out of the holy city. I'm sorry, the book of life. And the holy city. And, and, and good old southern or western talk, you go to hell. This book, the editors of this book, the people that put their name on it, Everybody responsible for pushing it, for, for, for editing this book, listen, unless they repent, they're going to hell. You scholars out there that are using the Lord, you're going to hell. And dear beloved, if you don't change from using this book, you're going to be rewarded with the reward of Satan himself. Well, if that book's not right, that book's not right, what is right? This book right here. The eternal word of Yah, the original scriptures. You know why there's a picture of a heart catheterization on it? Because it lights, it shows a heart with light in it. You see, Yahuwah wrote in our hearts guides to guide us to true faith. The barbarian faith has always recognized these seven laws that are written by our Creator in our hearts. Among those are be free. Among those are don't murder. Among those are one, one man, one woman. Don't break your law. Don't break your pledges that I love you, honey. And I love you all of my life. Stay with those pledges. If you made that pledge, stay with it. If you made the pledge, not steal, stay with it. You know, by the way, one of the things that breaks that law is our money. The American dollar. The, uh, the people that own and run the American dollar, which is a Federal Reserve Board that is neither federal and there are no reserves, but they do run the American dollar. And this year, it will steal 8 to 12% of every dollar in the world. It's called inflation. Still steal it. If you participate with that and continue to participate in that, you're giving our government carte blanche to basically fund anything they want to. You know why those politicians got so rich? You know why they don't object to it? You know why you don't find any moral politicians? At least I can't find any right now. They ought at least be objecting uh, the fact that they're supposed to be servants and they get a, a lifetime income for two years of work. Wouldn't you love to have a job like that? Show me somebody that's objected to that. Enough not to take it. I can't find one. So they're all scoundrels. The scripture even talks about there's going to be a time when they say, no, no, I wasn't a, uh, you know, don't, don't, I wasn't a moral person. I wasn't a teacher of ethics. Oh, no, I was just an old farmer out there. <laughs> because there's a great judgment upon those who claim to be leaders. You burn for a very long time. A lot of people don't believe in hell anymore. But uh, this book right here that gives you thousands of proofs, supernatural proofs that it comes from God. The Holy Bible doesn't. Oh, there's a lot of people say it does, but it doesn't. You know, it begins with the heavens and the earth. No, it doesn't. And that's not how the universe began. The universe began with the Big Bang. A fiery explosion. That's the first book in this 
in in this book. This is just the first seven books. We're soon going to be publishing just Barisha, the first book, and that means that the the purposing or guiding the fiery explosion is Yah. It's scientific. You know, every part of the creation is an evidence that it was supernaturally given and supernaturally uh, preserved for you. Now, there is a copy of these original scriptures in the Americas. In fact, there's seven copies just in North America, seven copies in South America. We haven't found them yet, but we're looking. But we're getting closer. We're getting some good indications. The copy we have right now was found near the, the uh, birthplace of Abraham, near the Euphrates River in ancient uh, eastern Yisrael. Our nation is not Israel. Israel is a counterfeit, just like Jesus, just like the Lord God. You go to Israel today, pretty secular place. Uh, has Yahuwah used it? Yeah, he uses all kinds of things. Uh, it's a sign. The, the prime minister of, uh, of Israel today, his name is Benjamin Natan Yahu. Natan Yahu, listen, you scholars, means the gift is Yahu. Yasha Yahu was Isaiah's true name. The Savior is Yahu. Yeremi Yahu was Jeremiah's true name. It means the resurrection. One rises up is Yahu. Eli Yahu means the Almighty is Yahu. That's Elijah's true name. How much more evidence you need? And then 72 other prophets all talk about Yahu. Who do you think your Savior was? P46, P45. Both the Hebrew uh, scriptures, old scriptures, the earliest Greek New Testaments talk about Yahoo. We've said that many times. I've been saying that for over 10 years. When I first put Yahuwah's name on the internet, it came back zero. Nobody uh, had Yahuwah's name on there. Now there are quite a few that have claimed they got some vision from God and all that kind of nonsense, you know. Look, I didn't invent Yahoo. Far from it. That'd be pure blasphemy. But what I want to tell you is that if you're looking for truth, listen to the barbarians. Because they were the ones that Almighty Yahuwah trusted to restore his scriptures to you. If you want to know truth, if you, there's two ways you can do it. You can go back and do the research all yourself, which is going to take you like it did me. It's going to take you about 30 years. Or you can take our translation, use your brain, use your heart, pray and ask if it's true. And use your mind. Look, if there is just one uh, untruth, one lie in this book, it's not from God. It's not from Him. I can show you uh, thousands of errors in the Holy Bible. I can show you thousands of errors in most of the Greek texts. There's only one text that is pure, and that is the original. The original scriptures. And it will lead you to an amazing life. I hope this has helped clear up a little about who the barbarians are. So that when you see us around, we're ones who love freedom. We're ones who protect women and children. We've been doing it now for 27 years. We have over 400,000 women and children that we've rescued from different nations of the world. We have worked in the, in the biggest hot spots of the world over in the Middle East. We fought against Al-Qaeda. We were fighting against ISIS. We're fighting against genocide and against murderers and against terrorists all over the world. Uh, we continue to give of ourselves. Us leaders um, are really servants. The ones who go in first are not the 20 and 30 year olds like the pagan nations go. No, we let them raise their families. We forbid them to go to war if they're, over, if they're younger than 50. Women don't go to war. Us old boys at 70, they go first. Then the 60-year-olds, after we fall, 60-year-olds go. And after they go, the 50-year-olds go. So it's going to be my privilege to, um, to represent um, Yasserel and the barbarians here in the Americas for a while. And there's still tyrants that are here that are stealing from us. The biggest of which that I've found uh, are in two groups. One is in Washington, D.C. Uh, they've already stolen your money. They've reduced Americans to the most uh, indebted people in world history, $2.1 million per American, and we're going to go confront them. You know, we're on our way up. <laughs> we don't want to rule anybody. 
But if you believe in the Constitution of America and you're a patriot of America, come and help us. Because uh, I would like for it to be a nonviolent uh, restoration of the American government to a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We're going to a democracy. Vote with your cell phones. Get rid. Make, make the president our secretary. Make the senators uh, our assistant secretaries. Let them work for the American people rather than trying to be our lords and trying to rule over us. And by the way, having our purse strength, you know, no more unlimited bank accounts. No, they become our secretaries. They become our errand boys. They become the ones who enact what the American people decide for good or bad. That's the barbarian way. It'll be a huge change. Believe me. <laughs> I've got the religious leaders that hate us barbarians. Now we've got the politicians hate us barbarians. <laughs> Not the only ones that love us are the children and the women and the working people of America, which is exactly the group we have always cared about. We care about you. We care about your future. We're for the little guys. And, uh, I hope you come and introduce yourself to us, talk with us, that we become friends. I think you'll love the American Barbarians. Have a blessed day.